I want to talk to John Whitehead. He's a constitutional attorney and the president of the Rutherford Institute, the organization that has defended Brandon Robb. This is John's first TV interview since the judge ordered Brandon's release today. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm doing fine. Uh, very happy about the decision that was rendered today by the judge. So. I, please explain what I might be missing because I, I have to tell you, and, and, and maybe you can help me on this, I, didn't, I don't think I've ever heard of this kind of stuff happening in America until recently. Have you? Well, uh, yeah, it happens. There's about 20,000 civil commitments alone in Virginia each year. So what happened here is Brandon's mother went on Facebook and started yelling about it, and that, that got people up in arms. But there are a lot of people this happens to, thousands across the United States, yes. Uh, for, just like I said, his mother got out there on the web and talked about it, and I contacted her. So a veteran called me and said, John, you got to look into this matter. I called and talked to her, and I said, you got to be kidding. It was over Facebook posts? If you know what happened was he was picked up last Thursday by the FBI and the local police. He saw him drive up in front of his house, and he got out, and he, he was in his shorts. He walked down the front porch and said, what's up, guys? He said, you've been p posting some things on Facebook that are very controversial. So while he was talking to him, they surrounded him, put his hand behind his back, handcuffed him. He, they wouldn't let him put his clothes on, and they put him in the police car. You can watch the YouTube video. His uh, brother's uh, girlfriend took the video of the whole event. Took him to a psychiatric ward. He had a 15-minute examination by a psychologist, and he was committed to a mental institution. Uh, we had a hearing Monday, and uh, they posted out all these uh, so-called posts he made, but they were on a private Facebook grouping he had with his brother and his sister, and they were playing a game called uh, Dear Illuminati, where they would say things to each other and they were song lyrics i mean some of them were violent type of song lyrics but you know you can go back to the rolling stones and beatles and get violent song lyrics so, that's so and that was the evidence against him okay so two things one how did they uh, did they have a warrant for his arrest no warrant for his arrest and no search warrant here was the key because the police arrived and said he said what crime have i committed they said, sir, you, you haven't committed a crime, and we're not charging you with a crime. And they haven't, and they're not going to. I've talked to the police and the FBI, and they say he committed no crime. His so-called problem was posting things about revolution. Well, I, I got it. I got it. But if there is no warrant for an arrest, if there is no um, uh, warrant for search, I, I believe I, there's some place in the Constitution that, that you can't do anything. Oh, yeah. The thing so, is, we're, we're getting ready to file a civil lawsuit. We're talking to the mother and uh, uh, Brandon because they, he's been put through hell for a week. In fact, he was threatened today by some psychiatrists at the psychiatric, psychiatric hospital before he was, he was released. But, yeah, uh, under the civil commitment law in Virginia, the police can do this. They can pick you up. And there are civil commitment statutes across the country. Veterans have called me now, veterans organizations, and said, this is happening across the country, John. So I've got all these calls now from veterans saying, this happened to me, will you look into my case? And we're putting them all together. But the point is, is this is happening across America. This is not anything new. We've been asleep. I will tell you that I have talked to um, several um, uh, military members um, who are special forces who have been very concerned because they have seen this as well. They have seen that um, the military to get, you know, some benefits, et cetera, et cetera, are saying, yeah, post-traumatic stress syndrome, you just sign this, and, and that way you can get some benefits for it as they go out. And um, there are several military uh, people at very high positions feel this uh, is a setup, that the military is, is being made to look crazy um, again like uh, this man here brandon robb has never been under psychiatric treatment and he does he owns no weapon by the way so what did they what did he's they a decorated at, marine he's a decorated marine iraq and afghanistan two tours what did they um um uh threaten him with today well uh he he called me from uh they moved him three and a half hours away just a couple of days ago which kind of freaked everybody out us too so we filed a court order to get him back close to Richmond, Virginia, where he has two businesses, by the way. He's a businessman. And uh, he said a psychiatrist came in, and I said, what's up? And I said, what did he say to you? And he said, he really scared me. I said, what did he say? He said, the psychiatrist said, I'm going to brainwash you. And I'm going to force you to take meds. And so he got right on the phone. He could call out and call me, and I said, man, they can't do that. they got to have a court order. 
and they in Virginia you have to have a court order to force you to take medications but uh, that really scared him so uh, the, the message here is that we moved in sort of what I would call a psycho therapeutic state mentality now with these civil commitments but again they're happening all across the country so we better wake up folks because if you say something the government doesn't like you know he's a Ron Paul libertarian and a 9-11 truther and you don't have to agree with any of that I agree with you we have rights under the First Amendment, as you know. I know. That's what I said. I don't know if you heard the opening monologue. I don't uh, agree with 9-11 truthers, but I do stand for his right. I will, I will be at your side the whole time. This I'm, is I'm, wrong. Guess, yeah, because we're getting ready to sue the government over this. They put him through hell. Um, all right, let me switch gears, because I've never heard of your institution. Is the Rutherford Institute? Institute yeah. w what is the Rutherford we're a civil liberties organization. We handle cases that probably nobody else will. We have hundreds of cases going on across the United States from all about the Bill of Rights, the First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment. Uh, we just were in a big controversial case in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, where a pastor was put in jail for having a Bible study. And right. I mean, okay. we do all kinds of cases. There's also another one out of Phoenix that I wanted to get your opinion on, and I think you guys are representing this woman. She was giving water out in Phoenix. Is that you guys? Yeah, she was a Christian festival. Yeah, she was giving free bottle of water. It was 112 degrees. So a neighborhood preservation officer walked up to her under their zoning laws and said, you're violating the law. You have to have a permit or we're going to find you and take the water away. Well, she didn't know what to do. She called us. So we looked at the law. The law actually says you have to be putting things up for sale. So we've asked the city of Phoenix for an apology, but I don't think we're going to get it. We'll probably have to sue them as well. But she was handing out free water at a Christian festival. Okay. Let me ask you just one last question because you said, you know, several times now, this is happening all over the country. Um, and the veterans, I think. I think they're being targeted. Yes. Yeah, I think so too. Um, look at the, look at the uh, Homeland Security memos. Extremis, the extremism memos mentioned veterans. Yeah, that yeah. was really frightening. Yes. Um, okay, so... Um, you're not seeing this same kind of activity um, for the left, are you? I mean, the Occupy Wall Street, they're, they're saying it on national television, and nobody's scooping them up and putting them up in well, mental institutions. Honestly, I don't know, because what happens is people disappear. What, uh, as I said, her, this mother got on Facebook and started yelling about it, and I had veterans call me and say, look into this, but I'm getting calls from everybody now. Again, uh, we have to really understand what's happening. This is happening all across America, and I, again, I think veterans are being targeted. But anybody that the government perceives as a threat can be arrested and put in a mental institution now. Okay. Um, the next one is, 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 is this, uh, was this going on under the Bush administration widespread like this? Is this a new? No, it's been going on for years. Like I say, 20,000 people alone in Virginia. Civil commitments, that's what they call them. The police arrive, they arrest you, they don't charge you with a crime, and they take you to a mental institution. But, but, uh, we're but looking wait a minute, but wait, 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 wait. For that political people, statements? Political statements, yes. And other things, of course, but uh, the ones we're hearing about are for political statements, yes. So what the message know, even know what. Sense, especially by the FBI, is if you are a 9-11 truther, that's what I'm hearing mainly, if you're a 9-11 truther, you're going to get investigated. For some reason, the government does not like that. Again, as you know, the First yeah. Amendment guarantees the freedom of speech. Yes. You don't have to agree with it. I don't agree with a lot of things I hear, but like I tell people, the same thing you said, I'll stand with you as long as you're, you're not violent. You have a right to say it, and we'll stand with you. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, you, and, the, yeah. only, the only way things are ever going to be, um, because honestly, when it comes to the 9-11 Commission, that whole thing was fishy, but I don't think, I mean, it, there's just no way the government was involved in blowing up, you know, World Trade Center. It just didn't happen. That's yeah, my opinion. Yeah, not truth or either. But right, but I mean, if that's, what you, if that's what you believe, you have a right, and I believe a responsibility to say those things in a non-violent, um, uh, in a non-violent way. James Madison, who wrote the First Amendment, said, and this is a quote, he said, the, the First Amendment was written to protect the minority against the majority. He, didn't, he wasn't talking about racial minorities. He was talking about people who say things that we think are crazy. The only kind of speech. That's what it protects. Nobody needs to protect speech that everybody likes. Yeah, it's exactly. That's what, that's what Madison was pointing out. And he was saying, that's go, if you're going to find people you don't like. I defend people all the time that I disagree with vehemently. But it's free speech, folks. All right, so how can, because this is honestly, this is the, you know, 
this is day number what three for me on on this um, paying attention to this how where do people even go to find out more information about what you claim is happening in the country? I go to Rutherford.org. I write on it all the time. In fact, I write for Lou Lockwell. I write for the Huffington Post. We post the same articles on our website. You can read. Uh, I write on what's happening across the country. The thing is that the government is going on our websites. They're going on uh, Facebook and they're reading what we're doing, even in private, so-called private conversations. So. We, we're moving into a surveillance state. We have to be very careful. And I tell my friends, I, I get uh, text messages from my friends sometimes, and I'll, I'll, I'll text back and say, don't say that. Like, the movie Bomb, not a good idea, because that goes into an electronic file, keywords. So you got to really be careful. And, and, and let me say this. We shouldn't have to do that in America. No. Is this America? That's a question I keep asking. All right. Um... Thank you so much, and I'm I'm glad that there is progress on this um, on this case, and we'll um, stay in touch with you, John. And, Rutherford and or, Rutherford.org and find more about what we're doing and read the articles. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank it, John. You, um, the world is a very uh, dangerous place because many will try to deceive you many will think they're right and they are not many will take things that are innocent and turn them into something nefarious I want to make it very clear that from what I know of this story um, this is an outrage. He kind of threw a lot of chips down on the table here. And there were some things that uh, stick out um, to me as flares of caution. Um, but the one thing we should um, be reckless with is our defense of people who have opinions that we don't agree with. I have never asked for a boycott. I've never asked for someone to be fired. Um, man, right after 9-11 when Bill Maher said, you know, that at least the uh, bombers from Saudi Arabia were not, uh, were not cowards and ABC fired him, I stood up for him. And I think he's a despicable human being. If we can't meet on the battlefield of ideas, as George Washington said, if we can't speak to each other um, openly, if we are paranoid and watching over our shoulder, um, we lose the essence of who we are and we will never be a great nation again. We must be vigorous in our search for the truth, question with boldness, hold to the truth, and speak without fear. But first things first, question with boldness. Buckle up, I have a feeling this is going to be an interesting ride.